Hi, welcome to this lecture in the orthopedic trauma series. And in this lecture, we're going to continue talking about pediatric trauma and we're going to continue here the upper extremity injuries. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself. We stopped in the previous lecture uh, at uh, the both bone forearm. The first topic in this lecture will be the distal radius fracture. Distal radius fractures are multiple um, types, as you can see here in this pictures from uh, my book in pediatric orthopedic for primary care physician. Uh, you can get the green stick fractures, um, which is uh, angulated but not bent. You can get um, the completely displaced fracture, as you can see here. You can see torus fracture. Uh, the, also, the fractures can be metaphyseal, or it can be through the growth plate, as we're going to see after that. All this type fall into the category of distal radius fracture. So again, distal radius fracture can be angulated but not displaced, like this fracture, green stick torus it means failure of one cortex the other cortex is intact or complete fractures and displacement all these are types of distal radius fracture the fracture can be in the metaphysis or it can be at the level of the physis which is sulter harris and we're going to see some examples for that um, the accepted alignment in cases of distal radius fracture is up to 20 degrees dorsal angulation meaning apex volar when we say dorsal angulation means that the apex of the deformity is volar you can always know volar and dorsal from the thumb so the thumb is at always in the volar um, side so this is a dorsal angulation or another word for that is apex volar angulation you can accept up to 20 degrees uh, at the uh, till the age of 14 years in boys and 12 years in girl um, uh, if you can get the fracture to within this uh, degree of angulation, uh, you can apply well-molded cast and do a close follow-up to make sure that the fracture does not displace. So you can see here, this is an angulated distal radius on the fracture. Fracture was reduced and it was put into casting with molding. As you can see here, uh, you have molding of the cast uh, and um, you have one um, a point of fulcrum here you have uh, one point here and one point here that's why the cast itself looks uh, bent like this um, and this bending here of the cast will give you a straight bone and um, uh, this is called well molded cast and we spoke uh, before in the both bone forearm about the cast index uh, which is basically a criteria for the uh, for the shaft radius and ulna and it also can be used for the distal radius and ulna uh, so um, the treatment um, in most cases is closed reduction and you uh, um, are looking for a target which is less than 20 degree dorsal angulation for um, boys uh, 14 and less and girls 12 and less and once you can obtain this you apply well molded cast and do a close follow-up um, this is a picture here of um, uh, how much um, remodeling you can get. This is one of my patients. Uh, these x-rays are only eight months apart. This is a six-year-old um, uh, uh, boy who has a um, distal radius angulation about 45 degree. And uh, only eight months later, it's very minimal, nine, mo nine, month, uh, nine, nine degree angulation. Uh, remember, the, uh, there is a large angulation, uh, large remodeling potential in the distal radius uh, fracture because the distal radius physis is very active growth plate, uh, and there is lots of growth that happen from this distal radius. Uh, so the um, uh, amount of expected remodeling is very high. Similar to adult, distal radius fracture can cause acute compression of the median nerve, resulting in acute uh, carpal tunnel. Uh, syndrome and um, if this happens um, um, before reduction like patient present with the displaced fracture and acute carpal tunnel the treatment is close reduction and reassessment if this happen after the close reduction uh, the treatment is first split, um, um, splitting uh, all the um, uh, casting material uh, if this fails to control the symptoms um, the acute carpal tunnel release uh, should be uh, done uh, with pinning of the fracture to avoid displacement uh, note that this is not uh, compartment syndrome. Uh, this is compression on the nerve, direct compression on the nerve, direct uh, um, acute uh, carpal uh, tunnel. Uh, so no fasciotomy is needed in these cases.
Um, and, uh, as we said, the fractures um, in the distal radius can occur into the diaphysis, and it also can occur through the physis or as a, or a sulter, as a sulter Harris injury. Uh, the treatment in these cases um, for the sulter Harris is close reduction and casting. Uh, the distal uh, radial uh, uh, physis is very forgiving. Um, in the vast majority of cases, no growth disturbance will happen. Uh, remember, these fractures heal uh, much quicker than the metaphyseal fracture. This is a very active area, so it heals very quickly. So if the patient presents late, um, more than uh, four or five days, uh, it's better not to try to reduce the fracture because uh, there is some healing that happened um, in this um, uh, small period. Um, and uh, for you to reduce the fracture, you will need excess amount of force, and this force may result in um, damage to the uh, growth plate. So um, these fractures, as we said, uh, heals faster, and they have um, a very good remodeling potential because they basically are at the level of the physis, so the growth um, uh, uh, um, uh, potential and the remodeling potential is very high. So if um, they present late more than uh, four or five days, the treatment is uh, just application of a splint or a cast with no trial of reduction because uh, the reduction will require excessive amount of force that may cause injury to the growth plate. Um, uh, Sulter Harris injury of the distal ulna is different than distal radius. We said that the distal radius is very forgiving. Uh, the very vast majority of cases will not have any problem with distal radius. Uh, this is in contrary to the uh, distal ulna. Distal ulnar uh, physis injury have an, uh, an instance of growth disturbance that is up to 30 to 40 percent. You can see here, this is one of my patients had um, a distal ulnar physier injury um, uh, one year earlier, and he presenting with a uh, short ulna here. You can see the ulna level is uh, very short compared to the distal uh, radius. Uh, in, in general, trying to do a physiodesis of the distal radius um, is very uh, hard to achieve. So if the problem is the ulna, uh, it's much easier to lengthen the ulna as we did here in this um, uh, um, uh, case. Um, uh, if the problem is in the radius, um, as we said, stopping the growth of the ulna is much easier. Uh, so uh, in the radius, obtaining a physiodesis is hard. Um, uh, uh, so lengthening the ulna is a better option uh, if the ulna is, um, is the um, if the radius is affected stopping the growth of the ulna is much easier um, uh, procedure uh, so in in this case um, like for example you may get a case like this in the exam patient had a distal distal ulnar physiar injury is now short on the ulna what is the best treatment the best treatment is not to try to get um, uh, epiphysiodesis of the distal radius because it's hard to obtain. The best treatment is just to lengthen the ulna. Um, now let's talk about the Galeazzi fracture. We talked about Montagia in the previous lecture. Galeazzi is um, a fracture of the distal radius with dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint. So when you get a perfect lateral of the wrist, the distal radius and the distal ulna will not uh, overlie each other. Um, uh, this is a picture from my book for pediatric orthopedic uh, for primary care physician. Um, uh, in the very vast majority of the uh, Galeazzi fracture dislocation, the, um, it's a volar angulation, which means um, uh, apex dorsal angulation. So most of the distal radius is dorsal um, angulation, which means basically uh, dorsal angulation is apex volar. Galeazzi is uh, different. Galeazzi is volar angulation, which means it's abic dorsal angulation. So the abix of the deformity is pointing dorsal, as you can see here. Um, and uh, the reduction, um, the, the treatment is a closed reduction with um, casting in supination. Remember, supination um, puts the um, uh, ulna more into um, the volar direction and pronation puts the ulna more into uh, uh, dorsal direction. So if you start with a deformity that the ulna is dorsal, the best thing is to supinate so you can um, uh, reduce the uh, ulna in a better position. And you can see the difference here. Uh, after reduction, distal radius and distal ulna are overlying each other. Before reduction, they are not overlying each other. So the treatment is closed reduction, uh, a long arm cast in supination so that you can push uh, the uh, ulna uh, a little bit more um, uh, volar. Uh, 
um, and uh, obtain reduction of the distal radial, uh, distal radio ulnar joint. Uh, this is another um, X-ray of a Galeazzi uh, patient, uh, a little bit younger. You can see the AP mild deformity in the lateral. You can see uh, obviously that um, uh, um, there is um, a displacement of the distal radio ulnar uh, joint. Uh, the, the distal radius and, and the distal ulna are not overlying each other. And um, as we said, the very vast majority of them is uh, volar angulation, which means it's apex dorsal angulation. So the apex of the deformity is dorsal and the distal part is in the volar direction. So it, it is similar to other forms of Galeazzi in which is a volar um, uh, displacement or apex dorsal angulation. Um, uh, after that, we come to the scaphoid fracture. Scaphoid fracture in kids have certain characteristics, which they are more common in the distal pole, as you can see here. Uh, this is uh, a distal pole fracture, um, uh, and usually they are non-displaced, and, and the treatment is cast for four to six weeks. So this X-ray, this is a skeletally immature patient with a scaphoid fracture. You can see it here and here. Um, the, um, uh, the characteristics of the fractures all can be seen in this X-ray. It's usually distal from the pole scaphoid fracture. It's an undisplaced and it can be treated in a cast about four to six weeks. So most of these cases do not require surgery, especially if they are non-displaced. So, phalanx fracture, they are common uh, indication uh, of phalanx fracture fixation is if there is um, a rotational abnormality, as we're going to see uh, in the next slides. Uh, one important point that you need to know, and it commonly comes in the exam, is the distal part of the middle and the proximal phalanx, when they get a fracture, they are very far away from the growth plate in the proximal part of the bone. So basically, the, the remodeling potential is um, very minimal uh, to none uh, because the further away from the growth plate you are, the uh, less uh, remodeling you get. So, for example, this patient has flexion of the distal part um, uh, of the proximal frac uh, failing. So we did a close reduction and pinning to get uh, anatomical reduction. Uh, uh, and again, as I said, uh, the further away from the growth plate, uh, the less remodeling you have. So fractures of the distal part of the middle and the proximal phalanx, these are, in most cases, need surgical um, uh, treatment. Uh, if you are, um, uh, uh, um, if you me uh, get a case of uh, the, um, the fracture of a uh, heel, the fracture of the distal part of the proximal or the distal phalanx, in a flexion like this with patient not able to do um, a flexion um, of his IP, uh, the treatment in this case is not osteotomy and fixation. The treatment is osteectomy, which basically means that you remove piece of the bone so the patient can uh, bend more because osteotomy um, uh, is going to be very um, hard to uh, adequately fix. And uh, it may, because it's a very small piece, it may end in avascular necrosis. Um, so again, uh, indication for fixation for these fractures uh, is mainly a rotational deformity, as we're going to see. Uh, if there is a flexion uh, of the, uh, the fracture, remember the healing potential is very minimal. It's further away from the growth plate. The treatment is close reduction and pinning. Uh, if you see a patient um, a few weeks from the injury and this uh, injury is already um, healed, uh, the treatment is not osteotomy, the treatment is ostectomy, in which you, re you remove uh, the pieces um, of the bone that is blocking flexion. Uh, here is one example, here is one of my patients. You can see the fracture here is very, very minimal. You may think that this never uh, requires anything. It's in the distal part of the middle phalanx of the ring. Um, uh, you can see it here, very minimal fracture here. The line of fracture is here, uh, extremely minimal, extremely minimal. However, if you look to the clinical picture, uh, the rotation is so obvious. Compare this side to the other um, hand. So uh, this is the affected hand. This is the normal hand. This is the normal cascade that you should see. Uh, your four fingers pointing towards the scaphoid. Here you can see, obviously, the three of them is pointing towards the scaphoid, and this is obviously more rotated, uh, despite that the fracture looks uh, very minimal here and here. Uh, 
So the treatment that we did is close reduction and uh, pinning. You can see uh, we uh, close reduce the um, fracture and we put one pin. Here it is. And uh, now the cascade is very um, uh, uh, anatomical with pointing towards the scaphoid here. So you can see all of them pointing towards the scaphoid uh, and the cascade is back compared to ca the cascade here to the cascade here before the um, uh, reduction here these three points to the scaphoid and this point further away here all of them points to the scaphoid uh, same more fracture um, same more fractures occurs in the finger and the toes uh, same more fracture is very specific type of fracture uh, this picture um, uh, here uh, um, um, uh, showing the same more fracture um, uh, Seymour fracture is basically an open fracture um, uh, of the uh, proximal part of the distal phalanx. Uh, it happens through the growth plate, so it's basically a Sulter Harris. It's most of the case Sulter Harris type one or two, and you can see here what happens is the germinal layer here of the nail is inside the fracture. So um, you have the germinal layer of the uh, nail inside this open fracture. So uh, the, the, the treatment is um, uh, that you have to do debridement and then you have to do open reduction. You extend uh, the cuts on either sides of the uh, nail bed and you get the germinal layer of the uh, nail outside the fracture and then you reduce the fracture and pin it. Mm, this fracture is commonly missed mm, because if you, you're not aware of this injury, you may think it's just a displaced fracture and you can uh, reduce it with close reduction. Um, this does not happen, as I said, because the germinal layer of the nail is inside the fracture. So the treatment is open reduction. You extend the uh, cuts here into the nail. You give the antibiotic. You get the um, germinal layer out um, of the two uh, ends of the fracture and then you pin the fracture. Um, fracture of the base of, of the first um, the, um, uh, phalanx of the thumb. You can see here this fracture here. Um, this piece of the bone um, uh, has the attachment of the um, uh, collateral ligament, of the ulnar collateral ligament. So it's basically bony um, uh, 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 ulnar collateral ligament uh, of the um, uh, metacarbophalangeal joint. Uh, so it needs a fixation, and, and the fixation is by um, uh, um, a screw, a compression a screw, uh, open reduction internal fixation by a screw. Uh, so um, this fracture here is basically bony um, uh, um, ulnar collateral ligament of the MCP injury. Uh, so it needs um, an anatomical reduction and fixation by a screw to avoid instability. Uh, a, a very common fracture, the um, extra octave fracture, uh, it happens, it's a sultaris type 2 uh, of the um, um, uh, proximal phalanx uh, of the um, uh, um, small finger, um, and it always goes ulnar like this, so the treatment is close reduction, you bring uh, this finger this way, you can put a fulcrum here and you bring the end this way to get a closed reduction as you can uh, see here. So the treatment is close reduction and splinting of this fracture. Uh, thank you. And by this, we finished the uh, pediatric trauma, both lower extremity and upper extremity. Um, I hope it was uh, useful. Uh, and I hope you will um, find uh, these videos helpful for your study. Uh, thank you.